So Sistancha has been getting a lot of attention lately for its supposed ability to increase testosterone. And so because I've been getting so many um, requests lately to do a video on it, I did what any good YouTuber would do. And I went and bought a bottle of the strongest stuff I could find online and started taking it. And so essentially what I want to do in this video is walk through a little bit of my personal experience, but more so focus on the research uh, that has been done on Sistancha uh, over the past few years. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, the first thing that's worth pointing out here is that when it comes to the research on Sistancha, as far as I'm aware, there's only really one singular uh, clinical trial that's ever been performed in humans, which means a lot of the research, almost all of the research that we're going to look at today has been performed in rodents. And so that does need to be noted so that we can take this with a slight grain of salt. However, the research still is uh, fairly promising and extremely interesting. Now, in the exhaustive research that I did for this video, um, what you kind of start to see is that most of the research in regards to Sistancha really falls into one of two categories. One is uh, cognitive health and kind of underneath that would be mood as well as testicular function. Now, considering that the only clinical trial that's ever been performed on Sistancha uh, was performed in regards to Alzheimer's disease, that is kind of where I want to start out here and that is on cognitive health. Now, in this study, the researchers did note that, quote, after memoragain treatment, which is Sistancha tubuloso, patients with Alzheimer's disease showed no obvious aggravation of cognitive function, independent living ability, and overall conditions, but were stable throughout the study. And so the first thing to point out here is that Sistancha tubuloso in this individual clinical trial that it is worth noting was 48 weeks, which is extremely lengthy for a clinical trial, uh, did show that Sistancha tubuloso also could slow the progression of um, Alzheimer's disease and cognitive decline. Now, one of the common claims about Sistancha is that it is a good cognitive um, enhancer. And um, from the study, it does appear to have some type of improvement on cognitive function and specifically cognitive decline. However, it is worth noting that this study was performed in individuals that were experiencing cognitive decline, but it's not exactly clear if these uh, results would translate late into healthy individuals that are not experiencing cognitive decline. Just because Sistanche might uh, slow the progression of cognitive decline doesn't necessarily mean that in healthy individuals that it would elevate uh, cognitive function. However, nonetheless, um, it does appear to be somewhat of a promising supplement and kind of like nutraceutical drug for the prevention of Alzheimer's and cognitive decline. Now, when it comes to the mechanisms of action, we can see from this study that was performed in a row rodent-based model of Alzheimer's disease that Sistanche appears to uh, preserve both dopaminergic and cholinergic function. And because Alzheimer's disease is characterized by a loss of uh, dopaminergic function and cholinergic function, it is pretty cool to see a supplement that is able to kind of uh, prevent this from happening and to preserve the functioning of these neurons in specific brain regions. Now, again, this was in an Alzheimer's disease-based uh, model. Uh, model in rodents. And so it's not exactly clear if uh, Sistanche would raise dopamine levels and improve cholinergic function above baseline in healthy individuals. But again, it is still pretty promising. But not only does it appear to preserve dopaminergic function in the case of Alzheimer's disease, but it also appears to preserve dopaminergic function in a rodent model of Parkinson's disease, as well as preserve glial cell derived neurotrophic factor. And so it does appear that Sistanche is a fairly promising neuroprotective agent and can protect against the uh, negative effects of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and preserve uh, cholinergic function as well as dopaminergic function as well as GDNF, which is uh, somewhat sil similar to BDNF, which are neurotrophic peptides uh, that are present in the brain that help to kind of uh, preserve nerve function and nerve survivability. And so even though it is pretty cool to see uh, Sistancha uh, pretty effective at slowing the progression of some of these disease states. Again, it's not exactly clear if Sistanche would improve cognition in otherwise healthy individuals. And so um, I say all that to say that that's kind of like the gold standard in kind of like the nootropic world is finding cognitive enhancing um, uh, substances that can improve cognitive function in healthy individuals. And, you know, who knows, it, later down the line, we 
might actually have some research to suggest uh, that Sestanche is able to do that, but at the moment, it does simply um, just appear to be a cognitive protective agent at this time. But aside from its possible ability to improve cognitive performance and at least slow cognitive decline, it also appears to have some um, fairly potent effects on some other um, kind of neural pathways. And specifically, it also appears to be fairly potent at improving symptoms of depression and stress and anxiety as well. Now, in this study in particular, the researchers noted that, quote, the herb sestantia reduced the immobility period significantly in the mouse tail suspension test. Mice treated with the herb decoction showed an improved ability of spatial learning and memory in the Morris water maze test. Groups treated with the herb displayed a down regulation of the monoamine oxidase activity and the dopamine concentrations in the brain were also upregulated, indicating that Sestantia improved the nerve excitability. The serum concentrations of corticosterone were also down regulated, showing that mice benefited from reduced stress levels. And so not only does Sestantia appear to have some fairly notable effects on slowing cognitive decline, but it also appears to have some notable effects on improving mood parameters in um, a rodent-based model of stress-induced depression. Now, it appears to be doing this by one of several different mechanisms, and one is uh, that it appears to have some um, inhibitory properties on the monoamine oxidase enzyme, which is an enzyme that breaks down a lot of your catecholamines like dopamine and serotonin and norepinephrine, uh, which are neurotransmitters that are needed for proper nerve function. So by inhibiting uh, this enzyme, it does appear that Sestanche is able to improve the levels of these uh, neurotransmitters and maintain them in a state of stress. But not only does it appear to improve kind of in a general sense, just the level of several neurotransmitters that are needed to improve mood states during stress, but it also appears to be blunting the stress response by um, inhibiting levels of corticosterone as well. Now, I will say that stress is somewhat of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, stress can improve uh, levels of alertness and attention. However, stress in the long term can also hinder executive functioning and creativity. And so you really want stress to be kind of like in the perfect kind of like middle uh, space, so to speak, so that it's able to somewhat increase um, alertness and attention while at the same time not blunting the effects of creativity and kind of spatial learning. And so where Sistanche appears to really shine is kind of helping to um, suppress to some degree the stress response in those that are overstressed and um, to somewhat improve mood and cognitive performance in this uh, somewhat stressed state. But as we'll see from this study, not only does Sistancha appear to affect dopamine and corticosterone production during stress, but it also appears to affect serotonin levels as well as BDNF levels. And these results are actually mirrored in this study that also showed that in a uh, rodent-based model of depression that Sistancha was able to, again, increase levels of serotonin and BDNF as well as reduce stress-induced inflammation. And so I haven't really seen Sistancha really described in this manner, but it really does appear to be working as somewhat of an adaptogen to kind of blunt some of the effects of a hyper-stress response, um, which would theoretically improve mood states and um, improve uh, depression and anxiety that are related to stress. And so there is a fair amount of research to suggest that uh, Sistanche could be um, an effective tool to kind of reverse some of the symptoms of um, stress-induced depression and anxiety. But what is worth noting here is that not only does Sistancha appear to improve mood in stress-related depression, but it also appears to be fairly potent at reducing anxiety, specifically as demonstrated by all three of these papers, by inhibiting glutamate release. Now, glutamate is your primary stimulatory neurotransmitter in the uh, central nervous system. Things like dopamine and serotonin and uh, norepinephrine get a lot of attention. However, glutamate is the primary stimulatory neurotransmitter. And so by inhibiting uh, the production and release and blocking the signaling of this pathway, um, Sistancha does appear to be fairly potent at reducing anxiety, which personally has been my experience with Sistancha. Um, now, a lot of people like to take it for, quote, energy because of the fact that it does improve mood. However, I found personally that I respond best to it by taking it in the evening time, and it does appear to be fairly effective at uh, kind of helping me to relax in the evening time, which um, is actually demonstrated by this specific study that showed that
that uh, Sestantia might actually be an effective sedative at specific doses. And so when it comes to taking Sestantia for the purpose of improving cognitive performance and improving mood states, I personally found that I responded best to it in the evening time. However, if you're an individual that is particularly stressed or um, particularly struggles with anxiety, um, it might be a good thing to take throughout the daytime in order to improve um, stress levels and improve mood via improving stress levels. Now, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the effects of Sestantia on testicular function, and that would include things like testosterone production, fertility, as well as just general testicular function. Now, in this first study that we're going to be looking at, the researchers concluded that, quote, the CT and ECH treatments, which are Sestantia and the active ingredients in this instance, against BPA-induced testicular and sperm toxicity showed that CT and ECH have reversed BPA-induced abnormalities in sperm characteristics, testicular structure, and normalized serum testosterone. This was concomitant with the increased expression of LDHX, as well as the key steroidogenic enzymes, including STAR SP11A1, 3 beta HSD, 17 beta HSD, and CYP17A1, suggesting that CT and ECH enhanced testosterone biosynthesis. So, essentially, in these rats that were exposed to BPA, that uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with BPA, BPA is a plasticizing agent that is a known endocrine disruptor that essentially kind of like mimics estrogen estrogen in your body and binds to the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus and shuts down testosterone production. And so um, they were essentially inducing these rats with testicular toxicity via BPA consumption. And they did find that it could reverse BPA-induced toxicity. Now, the reason I find this to be particularly interesting is because of how ubiquitous endocrine-disrupting chemicals like BPA are. And so, uh, Sestantia might actually be a promising agent to help reverse some of the effects of uh, plasticizing agents that are that pretty much all of us are coming into contact with on a daily basis. Now, extremely similar results were also found in a couple of other studies in uh, diabetic rodents as well as kind of like externally induced stress rodents that were given corticosterone. And they also found in those two studies that um, Sestantia was effective at one, preserving testosterone production, two, preserving uh, fertility, and then three, essentially increasing all of the kind of intermediary hormones and um, enzymes that are required to improve fertility and uh, testosterone production. Now, again, it's important to note that it's not exactly clear if this would carry over over into healthy rodents. However, lucky for us, this was actually tested in another study. And in the study in particular that was performed in healthy rodents, the researchers did note that there was an increase in luteinizing hormone levels, an increase in testosterone levels, as well as all of the uh, steroidogenic enzymes that are required to produce testosterone. But what is most interesting about this study in particular is that they actually dove a little bit deeper in this study to figure out why uh, Sestantia was improving levels of luteinizing hormone um, and all of the enzymes that are required to produce testosterone as well as testosterone and fertility. And what they found was that Sestantia is actually blocking the androgen receptor. Now, the researchers here noted, and I quote, quote, that ECH down-regulated androgen receptor protein in the hypothalamus nuclei by five-fold compared to the control group, while treatment with enzalutamide, an AR inhibitor, decreased levels of AR protein in the hypothalamus nuclei by only 4.8 eightfold, which means that Sestantia appears to actually be blocking androgen receptors so efficiently that it's actually outperforming some of the known pharmaceuticals that are used for the same purpose. Now, for those of you that aren't super familiar with this process, one of the primary means by which your body actually produces testosterone is by sensing and detecting how much testosterone is actually floating around in your body. And so when testosterone binds to receptors in the hypothalamus, it it will um, essentially tell your hypothalamus to stop producing uh, gonadotropic releasing hormone, which then stops your pituitary from uh, releasing luteinizing hormone, which stops your testes from producing testosterone. However, if you block these receptors in the hypothalamus, it essentially tells your brain that there's no testosterone and that your body needs to kind of jumpstart the production of testosterone. And so it appears as though cystantia is essentially binding to the 
these receptors and tricking your brain into thinking that there isn't any testosterone in your body. Now, when you look at some of the effects of enzalutamide, which is a known um, AR antagonist, you'll also find that it's very effective at increasing testosterone, increasing uh, luteinizing hormone, and pretty much every sex steroid for that matter. However, the issue here is that you're actually blocking the receptors that these hormones bind to. And so because of this, I'm not at the moment a huge fan of using uh, Sistancha for the purpose of increasing testosterone. It might be effective, but there's just not enough evidence quite yet to see the full scope of what's going on here. And so because of that, um, I would not personally take it in order to increase testosterone levels. Now, where it really shines is in the case of improving cognition possibly and improving mood states, especially in the instance of stress-induced anxiety and depression and it also appears to be fairly effective at improving fertility and so if you and your partner are trying to conceive this might be a fairly good option to help you know speed that process along and so with all things considered i'm not exactly completely sold on Sistancha quite yet simply because there's just not enough human data um, to suggest what it's actually doing in the human body specifically uh, when it comes to testicular function however again it does appear to be a fairly potent adaptogen and so um, if you are going to be taking it i would specifically be taking it for that purpose and not for its testosterone improving effects but other than that guys that's pretty much all i have for this video if you guys are interested in getting 25% off of an at-home testosterone test, uh, make sure to check out the description down below. Let's Get Checked has been a sponsor of the channel since the early days, and so if you guys have not gotten your testosterone tested yet, this is quite frankly the easiest way to do it, so make sure to check them out, as well as a link to all of the free resources that I have made over the years, but other than that, I think I will see you guys next time.